so today I'm here with Suyash, who is like India's best functional nutritionist. <laughs> He's also the head of our supplements vertical. I'm telling you, like, we get so many referrals and everyone is like, but I want Suyash to work on my case. But he's like one of our technical geeks when it comes to understanding really complicated cases along with Johan. So Suyash, Johan contribute big time to the knowledge base that we have. And of course, he heads the supplements vertical. But I wanted to actually do this today with him because um, we had a mystery case, which was my case where I was gaining, ten, like I gained 10 kgs in a period of, uh, this is March onwards, no, Feb. Five to six months. Yeah, yeah. In a period of five to six months, I actually gained 10 kgs, which was surprising given the fact that A, my weight was really stable for so many years after that initial weight loss in 2017. And I was actually eating really healthy. Yes, we were eating outside food occasionally with the team meetings and everything, but it was still not that much of a, and I would still pick healthy stuff, right? So, and we tried doing things, we tried keto and everything. A lot of detoxification. Detox, well, right? and I spoke about the detoxing. I did lose a little weight there. But that weight just kept coming back. It was like the fat didn't want to leave. Right? Like the fat was just there. But like always, because we rely on root cause analysis so much, we decided to do our standard basic blood work. And uh, what did we see there, mostly in the panel? I did my own analysis, but I shared that with you. Ha, but I think we only see some deficiencies. But Haan, and infections. Infection as well, yeah. So we saw deficiencies of some basic nutrients, yeah. and then we saw a lot of infections, infections. And I was like, I asked Suyash, Johan both, right? You know, kis cheez ka infections hai? And I still remember you were keep getting sick. Yeah, most, yeah, yeah. Like, like even a smallest viral infection. Yeah, so in the last, yeah. in fact, uh, more than six months, like seven, eight months onwards, uh, the smallest viral that most people would recover, mm -hmm. I would like really get sick and I'd be knocked out, fever and then exactly. energy crash and everything would mm -hmm. happen, right? So that was happening symptomatically. Yeah. And in the analysis, what we saw was the like constant pattern of infection, 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 infection coming yes. up, right? Like every parameter that was in red was showing infection. infection. And I was like, okay, where is this infection, right? right. Like on a day-to-day -day basis, I didn't really have symptoms. I, I was energetic because I was drinking so much coffee. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, then we did, remember DHEA? DHEA, yeah, supplementation. And we also tested DHEA. Yeah, we tested DHEA, DHEA. thinking, okay, right. maybe my uh, hormone levels are dropping yeah. and that's why I'm getting sick. And that's why I'm gaining weight. Right. And DHEA was low. We'll, we'll talk of why it was low also. Um, then what else we did? Like before we actually could get to the root cause itself. I tried going keto, yeah, huh. I tried doing low carb. But still, I think you weren't losing any weight. I wasn't losing any yeah. weight. I was still very, very stuck to my body. Like it was like the fat didn't want to leave. And then uh, I think you said na, we should do the GI map and the Cyrex. Or I did well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think like we were looking at our client, a lot of clients, you know, then we realized that okay, we need to do some comprehensive test to get, get to the root yeah. cause. So we started, so what is it for people who don't know what the, G, we talk about it every day, what is the GI map test? So GI map test is, uh, it's it's like a map of your gut, path, like gastrointestinal tract. So you'll get a whole picture what's actually happening inside your gut from your microbiome to your uh, any kind of pathogens, uh, even enzymes. Uh, even microbially health, intestinal health, you know, you get a good picture, a comprehensive picture that you how how's your gut map, like gut, uh, like working. Yeah, functions. so basically, it's like, uh, uh, you know, I, I think they use the same RT-PCR technology, right? Yes. Which which is what they use for SARS-CoV-2, but they're, they are using RT-PCR to identify every single gene that's there in your gut and give you a full map of all the microbes that live in it. And then they are going one step ahead. They are yeah. also using qPCR technology to quantify that right. what's, yeah, how yeah, yeah. much quantity of that pathogen actually exists. Right. So that is, I yeah. think, missing in a lot of things, right? Lot because of, yeah. see, one is knowing that a pathogen exists, or even the good bacteria exists. The second right. is knowing how much how of much it is there, right? right? So the how much really makes a big, big difference in understanding the yeah. entire gut map. And then it looks at mm. enzymes and all, also, no? Yes, enzymes, uh, even a zonulin marker, which actually helps tell that whether there's a leaky gut issue yes. or not. Calprotectin, so, it looks yeah, at. Yeah, inflammation levels. Mm. The calprotectin level gives us inflammation, you know, whether there's any GI inflammation or not. And then there is steocrit, uh, again, that, that helps to, you know, identify whether the enzymes are actually correctly working or not. It gives us a really good picture, picture. like even if uh, your uh, immunoglobins are low through your secretory, yes, secretory IgA, IgA, you'll find, right? Yeah. And the thing is, see, once you find out this information, you can take actions. Actually. There are supplements, there are foods that will help with right. it. Why did we choose? Because this is a test that we send samples to the US. The sampling day is like the most disgusting day of my life. It's the worst thing to do. 
but anyway we'll leave that uh, too much information bit out of it uh, why did we choose this because we send the sample to the us it takes at least two weeks to get the results it's, it's a long drawn process it's expensive also why not choose one of the tests that here there are 8000 10000 rupee tests also yeah the the major disadvantage uh, what we see here in these reports are that they are they are very very you know superficial they only mm. tell you that uh, on the range level that okay this uh, microbe or this pathogen consists low high uh, medium that's that's it you don't know how much of that is exist whether that's in the parameter range or not whether it's too much too high uh, what kind of you know probiotics you need to put in your yeah. inside your body to you know uh, eradicate so you can't that really create solutions plus all this exactly. information about enzyme secretory iga calprotectin all that is not there in the local that's not there yeah for sure also i don't even know if they use pcr only do they use pcr they use pcr technology but that's they don't use qpcr technology which oh. quantification is not that's why they, oh. they lack quantification right uh, yeah, so you could do a local Indian report, but then that information is pretty useless because you still don't know what solutions to apply, apply right? Apply, exactly. And I don't think they test for Ackermansia and all, na? Uh, no, not Ackermansia, uh, but they do test for certain pathogens, but uh, uh, the GMF which I am talking about is really in depth. It's very, very Covering much. almost parasite and worms. I don't think they cover parasites Yeah, and, worms, and in so fact, so in my GMF map, we found that only, yes, na? Yes, parasites especially. So we found a few opportunistic bacteria, which is like the bad guys, but they were opportunistic, like had something else not been causing a major issue in the gut, these right. guys wouldn't have an opportunity to uh, do a party in my gut. Right. We found that there was a parasite called Blastosis hominis, hominis, which again, it's a technical name, but this parasite can even trigger autoimmune thyroid issues, right? So we found that in my gut. I, I, I keep telling Suyash, after all these tests, now I feel very whole and complete, like... <laughs> <laughs> because we'll talk about the Cyrex test and I'll, it, it's a horror show what's there inside there and we'll know why uh, I, I was, uh, I mean, why the fat happened. But I feel very whole, like human DNA, viruses, bacteria, parasites, fungi, mold, who's I missing? Think we've covered yeah, all we've covered all of them. So everything that can exist is like there, I, I feel very whole in one. Uh, with all the pathogens oh, possible. Everyone I'm carrying around with me. But anyway, so, so this Klebsiella also, I had only forgotten about it. So, and so that was yeah. secretary IG was also on lower side. Yeah, yeah. So digesting so. food and like absorbing it also was becoming difficult. So we had that information, and we actually had a very specific uh, supplement also uh, through our partnership with Apex mm. Labs that kind of targeted that parasite right without any allopathic intervention. But still, um, so my like I didn't have any major gut issues so to speak. But my digestion improved. Uh, like maybe occasionally I would like. Um, need coffee to kind of have a bowel movement and also that kind of got eliminated right? right so there was some improvement but the fat wasn't still going right mm -hmm. then we we're like okay this is not the answer while we know that these things are causing infections and it's important to fix these infections something else is this thing and then we did the uh, cyrex array 12 so what is the cyrex array 12 so cyrex array 12 basically tests for all of your pathogens uh, and their igg and iga activities so you know it's it's like Testing for all the it's known an bad pathogens. Yeah, autoimmune panel, which tests for all the bad known viral, bacterial, fungal, mold pathogens inside your blood, basically inside your body itself. So, so we did that because there seemed to be some like because the infections, it was not just like a gut thing that was showing up, yeah. right? Because I, if you remember, I've done a post on anemia, how it could not just be an iron deficiency, it could be anemia of a chronic uh, disease, like anemia that's caused by a chronic infection. And I've had anemia for really long. So we were like, what is causing this anemia? So we are like, okay, let's do the Cyrex test. Again, this is a test where the sample gets sent to the US. Uh, we have to do like biohazard labels and everything. Uh, but we've kind of got that covered. Like we can issue doctor certificates to uh, do that. Uh, again, it's another expensive test, right? So I think I resisted it for a while and I was like, okay, let's, uh, let's just do it and see what is in it. And the test reports came uh, last Friday. Last Friday. Like, so it the whole process took around you know one month approximately yeah and then suyash's reaction as soon as he sent those reports to me what was your reaction so it was like <laughs> aha we, we have found something you know uh, what's causing uh, you to you know suffer like this right so we we actually found you know a lot of things you know which yeah. is so the so suyash's cause. reaction was yay we found it i had sent them to johan johan's reaction he called me you're fucked man i was like yeah i know i'm fucked like what do we do from there my reaction was okay a mix of both like okay yeah we found stuff and then oh my god i'm so screwed and then for like uh, a little while i actually also felt very very 
um, anxious because there were too many things. Okay, so we'll tell you what are the things that we found in my Cyrix report. So I the major thing which we found was mold and fungal infection, and with that there were certain bacterial and viral uh, pathogens as well. Yeah. Right? So which you'll see in this screenshot itself. So th there is like uh, fungal stuff happening, and there is this really toxic mold called uh, Stachybotrys. In fact, Dave Asprey built his entire empire on Stachybotrys, like because he had mold contamination in his house, he got sick, and then he learnt about mold, and then he discovered like coffee also can be moldy, and then he created Bulletproof as a brand. So that's his real narrative, right? Like from where the Bulletproof brand came from, uh, and then like fighting against mold and he started doing so many other things but mold poisoning is a real thing and for me the stachybotrys levels were beyond measurable right like yeah so it, w it was going greater than the limit mentioned so it was like yeah like uh, even the lab couldn't say how much there was it was just too much right and stachybotrys is really really toxic maybe we'll like do an article on something on toxic mold and the side effects but it can cause so many things, right? From weight gain, which is like the simplest thing, because the toxins that stachybotrys releases are really bad. So your body is trying to hold, and mold toxins are fat soluble, yes. as well as water soluble. So your body uses fat to trap these toxins, and that is why my body was refusing to let go of the fat because my body was like, "Baba, if I leave the fat, the toxins are going to recirculate, and then your brain will have the toxins, then you'll act even more mental." So, <laughs> so, so I think my body did did me a favor by like um, creating this fat also as a symptom to show me that something's wrong. Even but you were experiencing slow wound healing, right? Yeah, yeah. Even my wound healing was very, very slow. Like wound, as in you know, even a mosquito bite that I would have scratched was taking really long to kind of heal or even the smallest bump like small scratches were taking really long to heal which is a sign of fungal Fung infections infection. uh, I was experiencing more and more brain fog for which I was having more and more coffee and, and sweet cravings as well right sweet cravings so the sweet cravings could just be candida right but yes the uh, and then uh, I, my mood and everything so I kept thinking it's because I'm living and it, it is a contributor there is a big uh, whatever cell phone tower right outside my house and Actually, 5G can make uh, toxic mold worse. Like it makes their biofilms harder to disrupt, and uh, it allows for more free flow of their toxins in, by opening up the calcium-gated channels. Okay. So at a cellular level, it's even worse. So Rusty shared a lot of paper. Rusty was like, "Oh, you have to read this paper. It will make you anxious even more." So he gave me another paper to read where it's talking of how EMFs can make uh, mold exposure worse. So this was a compounding factor and I, I just kept thinking I'm feeling low and my moods are getting impacted or my brain is not working as well because of all this 5G mm -hmm. exposure and all that. And that's why the detox helped in weight loss, whatever 10 days detox yes. we did, right? Some degree of uh, the toxins it must have absorbed. Um, but we weren't focusing on the root cause, right? Yeah, so we didn't know. Didn't help, right? I just exactly. thought it was at permethrin. Yeah, so I think in terms of a timeline, na, my system, one is it got stressed last year with whatever emotional mm -hmm. stuff I went through. That made me a little low and then February that permethrin exposure right. happened which was like a horrible chemical that I applied on my body which kind of made my system a little more vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And then I was drinking so much coffee. That, that and coffee is like guys one of the worst uh, sources of toxic mold. Like coffee, coffee beans can grow mold during the fermentation process right. itself. So I was drinking so much coffee from so many different brands and like sometimes ordering in coffee also for the team. Uh, just like drowning in coffee literally uh, until 3 p.m. After 3 p.m. if I drank coffee my sleep would be disrupted. So I was adding more and more of the poison to my own body and my body was compensating by creating fat, right? So toxic mold is a real danger, but we found that because of the side. We wouldn't have known exactly. guys, like, you know, we wouldn't have even imagined that there's such a high level of toxic mold and fungal stuff in my body. We also found two virals, no, Soyash? Yeah, so one was, I think, uh, Bartonella. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, huh, that's... That was an equivocal range yeah. though. Uh, and of course, Klebsiella, Again, like yeah, because it's there in the gut, gut itself, right? So, and we found the uh, HHV six, the yes. human herpes virus uh, six, and then we found the uh, CYP four fifty. Yeah, yeah, CYP four fifty mimic, which mimic. is the uh, human C peptide. So these two viruses, now I don't know where they came from, but. These two viruses, or maybe it is just because the system became so vulnerable because of the mold. I think mycotoxins and everything was suppressing your immune system. And yeah, that's and why that's, why the, that's why I was getting yeah. so sick also often, Sadly, right? So these herpes viruses can basically create any sort of autoimmune conditions, mm -hmm. like the um, uh, uh, this uh, cytochrome P four fifty one can cause autoimmune hepatitis, autoimmune pancreatitis, mm -hmm. and 
Now, I am not suffering from any of those things, but if we hadn't found it in time, these things would have created an autoimmune disease that's really hard to reverse. Like your pancreas gets destroyed by an autoimmune, like a virus, mm -hmm. you can't regenerate the pancreas, right? Um, HHV6 can do thyroid damage again. Right. So, one is we found out the root cause of what was causing my weight gain now. Second is we found the uh, possible future damage that could have happened because my system was so vulnerable. So what is our protocol for this? Like how are we solving the problem? So the first thing is we are we will be trying to you know attack uh, mold, fungus and you know get it out of the system. So at the same time we will be adding certain binders and detoxifiers yeah. which will help to you know smoothly you know get it out of, out of the system. Right. So that is one thing for sure and I think in food also you have been totally yeah, yeah, grain Yeah, I, I eliminated it, uh, mostly the, like if I eat grains also it's a couple of spoons maybe somebody's dabba ka rice uh -huh. or something but not like eating grains. Because grains, I stopped coffee completely, grains, coffee, all dried fruits, dates, raisins, mm -hmm. these can very easily have mold on them. Right. So I'm just eating like freshly cooked food, uh, even spices I've minimized, I'm using like freshly ground uh, paste instead of uh, raw spices, I mean instead of dried spices. So food, I've made those changes, that's not really hard because right. food we, we do, but in terms of the protocol itself, it's pretty intense. Yeah, so so one is antimicrobial, then is one is antifungal. And, and antiviral. Like, antiviral, like like whole combination of that and then with, with that, the binders, binders and, and all the all detoxifiers. That. And it takes about a year to eliminate mold right. toxins, okay? So guys, you could be suffering with so many symptoms without understanding what is really at the root of it. And it's a long drawn process, okay? It's not like mold detoxification. If, if you don't know the science of it, it, you wouldn't even know where to start. In addition to the antivirals, antimicrobials, antifungals and the binders, I'm also going to experiment with uh, therapies like ozone therapy. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, glutathione IV mm -hmm. because glutathione IV actually at a cellular level na, helps detoxification right. and infrared sauna. Oh. So three physical therapies, lots of supplements and binders, food changes and lifestyle otherwise I'm pretty good but no more coffee. And I think that a year from now we should see that the 10 kgs have disappeared. Yes. You yourself had to go through some advanced tests, right? So what was that about? So uh, what, what I was experiencing was uh, you know, it all started with fatigue, mild fatigue. And I thought, okay, it's because of lack of sleep, it should reside, right? He has a baby daughter who like doesn't let him sleep, okay? And she punches him in the face. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm like going through that phase, which every new father like goes. So that was something I know back of my mind, okay, that could be the reason. But what was happening was that it was interfering with my you know, day to day work cycle right so in the afternoon you know, i'll be feeling a lot of fatigue as well now i did my blood work regular blood work but i didn't find you know what's actually creating that fatigue and you know uh, nutrients those little bit micronutrient deficiencies were there but yeah, i didn't get to know that what exactly and there was no infection inflammation come up yes in your blood. infection inflammation wasn't there so i then i thought okay there could be something else right and i think then at the same time, you were experimenting, experimenting with DHEA yeah, and yeah, you know, yeah, cortisol. Yeah. So I think that's where I thought, okay, I should also you know try and I should also see. In the last two weeks or three weeks or so, the symptoms started to get worse. So then I thought, okay, now I should. So you really, were feeling like really sleepy in the day. Uh, or sleepy, like? especially in the afternoon. Hmm. Uh, fatigue for sure. When I used to wake up in the morning, you know, uh, the moment I used to reach office, you know, I used to feel that okay, uh, I wasn't you know feeling in that mode of you know oh. working stuff. So. So that was one of the case and then I was also experiencing sweet cravings and a kind of stimulation like like something to help like, me get stimulate uh, stuff, Like tea, right? coffee kind of stuff. Yes. So I added adaptocrine supplements like ashwagandha, rhodiola but they did help to some extent but they weren't you know helping me to sustain that you know my energy mm. levels. So then I thought of doing you know um, cortisol levels tested and DHEA mm. as well. So what I did was I did uh, my uh, morning, afternoon, evening cortisol level tested and to see that you know how well my cortisol levels. So what is cortisol? People don't yeah. know what cortisol so is. So cortisol is basically a hormone your adrenal glands secrete uh, in the response of any kind of stress. So let's say when you wake up in morning right and you're getting ready for the work. So you need uh, some kind of you know, energy level, energy or you know, stressor you know, to do that. So adrenal glands help you do that right. So, so ideally your cortisol needs to secrete have a peak around you know 10 to 12 pm yeah right? yeah it's, it follows that wake up so it goes, goes like that huh, and then, and it, then comes it comes down, down right yeah. but mine was it wasn't you know being you know in that peak it was it was being stimulated uh, at lesser level 
and then what was happening was in the evening time it was on slightly higher side yeah. right but so basically like the rhythm the cycle was you know really messed up Broken. especially of the cortisol uh, secretion and then i found okay all the symptoms what i'm being correlated is you know i'm seeing that way right because mornings or afternoon sometimes i used to feel fatigue and then when i used to go home in evening i sometimes used to feel good right i think that's because of the cortisol secretion right so that that was for sure and then it was uh, because of my sleep and wake up cycle right uh, because of my so doctor, how many months has your sleep cycle been disrupted now i think now this is 9 months right so uh, she she came around you know maybe uh, third or fourth month so I'd ideally five months i'll say five four, months five and months when did these symptoms start off uh in last three months so, so around i think two months of deprivation deprivation of yeah started creating this yeah right? so i so i was experiencing that i didn't dysfunction like all my uh, cortisol was being secreted and getting exhausted right because it wasn't being depleted because i wasn't getting proper sleep and you know proper uh, basically proper recovery from that so that was one of the reasons for sure so then i now so this is so interesting right so yeah. what was happening because morning cortisol levels were low you would have no energy and whatever motivation yeah. and that just like thing to let's get started right so you'd come to office and there'd be no like i know how much you love your work and i know how much everyone loves you and your jokes also so but you would feel very very low and because cortisol was low in the morning afternoon it was slumping even more so i think yes. afternoon it was 3 so or something so the post lunch you know i used to feel further fatigue like i ah. used to feel like that okay i need a nap of around half an hour to 1 hour so uh, it it was like dropping that. even more than the morning levels yep. nearly 50% of the morning. morning and then because the cycle is reversed by evening again your body would start making cortisol. cortisol now if you just look at it as an external thing you'd think oh when i come to work i have no energy i'm demotivated i'm feeling sleepy but when i right. go home i'm feeling good yeah. you could have just assumed that the work is making you sick sick you right. could have assumed exactly. that right which is what a lot of people sometimes might think like they write their job but because their sleep cycles and all are messed right. they might think they don't want to work anymore they might quit work and Or they might feel yeah, yeah and then might feel full purposeless right and right. then feel <laughs> worse because it's not fixing the cortisol cycle right. and i think so many jobs could be saved if just people checked their cortisol and dhea levels right Agreed. totally like and also a lot of people also tell us that you know they don't have energy to work out mm. right and mm. that could be the reason because they are they are not recovering well and they because of the lifestyle yeah. issue they yeah. they're so depleted that they don't have that energy right so th- that was one of the same thing with me as well i used to do only deep breathing exercises and stretching in morning but i didn't used to feel like working out right but i actually wanted to do but my body wasn't supporting that because and it doesn't have the fuel yeah it. resources basically so that was the major thing and now i know because you know of that and now i know what to do and how to support so my so what are you going to do now next so now what i'll be doing is uh, of course sleep is something which is not in my hand right now at the moment but what i'll do i'll be doing is i'll be supporting my adrenal glands as much as possible so one is adrenal cortex supplement which i'll be you know adding right. it to to support my adrenal hormones and then secondly uh, i'll be making sure that you know uh, i'm 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 adding a lot of amino acids because that really helps to secrete again all the uh, sex hormones and cortisol hormone right so because nityasha is still tiny and you can't make any changes to your sleep schedule yeah. because you can't tell a baby hey my adrenals are dysfunctional baby sleep. just go to sleep on time right you can't do that right. so you are using supplements to kind of counter that and one of the very uh, you know uh, good i will say you know interesting symptom which i didn't know it was coming from that so i was experiencing outburst of anger which i generally oh. don't do like uh, sometimes on even on nitesha unconsciously i used to you know shout uh, and and then nilisha used to tell me that okay why are you shouting she's baby and then yeah. i used to think okay how i am i am experiencing because the messed up cortisol like it's coming in the evening when you're right. supposed to be using it for your day to day work but now it's there and it's creating energy exactly. but like what are you going to use it for ha so then i research then you know that's one of the again uh, oh, symptom wow. of adrenal dysfunction uh, that you know you have anger outburst or anger sim- like from, for no reason ah uh. so yeah so like i basically uh, get to know that you know why what are all the mysteries you know i'm been creating and what so it's incredible that? and the test was like what like in one day you just gave three samples yes. the report came on the same day we did it locally at our favorite dhande lab yes. and so much insight you got into your own exactly. body exactly right? so all of the symptoms you know were making sense right and then you know okay now what you need to do next right so definitely you know it, it gives you a good time real time picture for sure wow, i didn't know all of the other i just knew fatigue i didn't know so many other things were also happening simultaneously yeah so i was also not able to make sense right so ah. i didn't know that you know wow, maybe it could be because so of so how does it feel now to have the answer right it's like the same yay moment right for me when i saw your report yesterday i was like we found it we found what exactly. is going so, on so so you are more aware now right yeah. so whenever that you will going through a certain symptom okay you know that 
that's hap- it's because of that right cool so good so basically that's why we wanted to come together and speak. talk about this like we both had to go through more advanced tests to really understand what was going on in our own bodies because look guys health is not a perfect thing i keep talking about this it's a spectrum right so sometimes you are at perfect health from there you can go upwards but something can happen it can bring you downwards so you can't be disappointed now imagine if he, either he or i would have been disappointed oh we are feeling like this but we are supposed to be health professionals yeah. we are teaching other people about their health how can we feel like this if either of us had felt that we wouldn't have done these tests and wouldn't have investigated further but i think we are who we are because we do these tests right exactly. <laughs> and that's why we can help people so that's all this was about uh, if you any of you watching this want to learn more about these advanced tests want to get them done for yourself even if you are suffering even if you've not done like the full 3 month program with us but you just want to get an idea of like maybe there's an autoimmune thing or a gut microbiome issue that you want to look at please reach out to us um the the website link is ithrivein.com i'm sure in the show notes the team will put that as well or you could just leave a message in like you could just comment on this podcast or just uh, find us on instagram and dm us we are we are really on every ch- platform but find out this stuff about your health guys um, it's it's really something that gives you a lot of clarity in terms of what to do next and then it gives you a sense of peace right. i think I'll that be, peace I, is is what is important or right? else you'll just keep wondering oh, why am i feeling this like so so you now you know okay that this is because of that so you can yeah I mean, because for me i didn't yourself, like right? carrying this extra weight i don't right. like it like aesthetically when i look at myself in the mirror i it's not it's not something i because i know what the work i did to kind of get to that 60 kg and how my body looked and i was really happy with that so i am not pleased with what i see in the mirror but then i didn't want to starve myself i didn't want to do any of that nonsense that i'd done in the past right so knowing now that there's a real reason is really what made the difference so do this guys like get your blood work done do the test like learn about your own body that's where a lot of your freedom comes from and then we have all the tools and assessment right to help you yeah that. so even like it's not just about the test even helping you uh, like the kit and the courier exactly. and getting it to the us yeah, yeah. helping you with the interpretation like we can interpret our own test and like make sense of it right but you guys might get confused so if you need help with that support with that we offer that as well so um, don't ignore your symptoms every symptom is your body trying to tell you something's off please fix this so please please always pay attention to symptoms